let's talk about stocks and stock valuation. I'm sure you have a stock in your 401k or you've thought about buying a stock. So figuring out what they're worth is uh, something you're probably interested in. Uh, so we're going to talk about how to do that uh, now. So the general time value of money equations are perfect for this. That's exactly what we'll be using with a couple of extra little formulas thrown in. But basically what we're doing, so it's easy to see and understand up front, what we're doing is taking the future cash flow of the company, the future cash that the company is generating over and above everything it spends, the, the cash that's actually available to the shareholders, and we're discounting that back over time. So each year its cash flow is being discounted back forever in, into a perpetuity. So when we think about what a value of a company is, the company should last forever, and we're going to discount that future cash flow forever back to today to find out its present value. So we're looking for PV, or we're actually looking for a net PV, or net present value of that future discounted cash flow. And that will become more obvious as we go through. I've got um, a couple of things here. First, we know that uh, we are, the value of any asset is the present value of its expense expected future cash flows, which we just covered. Stock ownership produces cash flows from dividends, uh, which we can uh, measure because the company will uh, announce dividends. And of course, capital gains, buying and selling. The value of the company can go up or go down, and that of course has a great deal to do with cash flow from the company for us. Um, the valuation of different types of stocks, we're going to do three different models, zero growth, constant growth, and differential growth. So we're going to start with zero growth. So zero growth means that there will be no growth in your return. So the company's not getting bigger. It's going to be a static amount of return for you in your investment. Now that's a very simple formula. You could even think about it as a bank account. Uh, if you put $100 in the bank and you get 10% interest, you're going to get 10%. What are you going to get next year? 10%. And what are you going to get next year? 10%. Unless you compound your money, uh, if you keep withdrawing it every year, uh, you're going to end up with the same amount of money. It's going to be constant. So in a perpetuity, uh, we can easily see the uh, deposit times the rate is the coupon. Rearrange that algebraically. The deposit, if we just divide by rate, we get coupon versus the rate. So the present value is the coupon divided by the rate. If we go to the next slide, we can see that there's an example. What is the value of a lottery ticket that promises to pay $15 every year forever? The interest rate is 10%. Well, the value of the lottery, of the lottery not only the lottery ticket, but the value of the lottery itself, is $15 divided by 10%, or $150. So the total value of all those lottery tickets to break even, if you bought every ticket in the lottery, would be $150. If they issued 300 lottery tickets, then, which is very common, uh, then it's a 50-50 split. The, the, uh, the value of the uh, lottery is $300, $301 tickets, and they're only going to pay off $150 uh, in value if it's $15 at 10% over the next, uh, over forever. So what you can see is that the perpetuity is uh, a way to look at things uh, that um, uh, will return you long-term cash flows. And this is very important for a corporation because corporations, of course, are supposed to last forever. So at some point when we do our cash flow evaluation, we're going to have to put a perpetuity into it to account for cash flows going on forever. So that'll be a very important part of our stock valuation. So that's the first part. That's... Um, uh, the zero growth model. Uh, you can see that the um, zero growth model in a um, uh, dividend stock is we have the dividend uh, and then we have dividend time period one. So dividend time period one or all the dividends uh, divided by R gives you the perpetuity which is the price today. So if the dividend is um, uh, two dollars and the return that you're looking for is ten percent you would have a two dollar dividend divided by ten percent which would make the stock worth twenty dollars that's right you would pay twenty dollars for a two dollar dividend you would be getting twenty dollars uh, you would be getting ten percent back in your return over time so that would be p sub zero or the present value um, here's another example suppose the big deal company offers to pay an annual dividend of $2 per share, and it will never increase or de decrease. The required rate of return for you for, an exa uh, for this type of investment is 8.5%. What is the minimum amount you would be willing to pay for a common share? 
Well, we use the zero growth formula of P is today's price equals the dividend divided by the required rate of return. So the solution would be $2 divided by 0 0.085, and the price would be $23.53. So you would pay $23.53, and if it returned $2 uh, every uh, dividend period for uh, the, the forever, uh, then you would feel like you got 8.5% return on your money uh, over time which isn't a bad return, uh, and it's a way to price those constant uh, streams of dividends. But most companies don't have constant returns. They have uh, growing returns, hopefully growing returns, and so that we'll get into that in the next uh, module under constant growth.